You may have already seen this uh, 1968 Volkswagen Beetle transaxle demonstration from your f local friendly space claim or application engineer. But um, what I thought I'd do for you today is take you through what went into modeling this thing. And uh, you can think of this as kind of the uh, director's narration version of the demo. I've never actually watched any DVDs that included this content, so bear with me. But uh, what's fun about this demo is almost everything that we show you in making it were things that we faced when putting the parts together. So here over the next, oh, say five clips that I put up, you'll actually see what went into putting this model together, and maybe it'll give you an idea of what it's really like to use space claim. So what you're looking at is, uh, that's the, the transmission end, is the more opaque version. This is one of our lightweight assemblies, so we haven't loaded half the parts. And we use this quite a bit when modeling the thing just to keep uh, performance up. Now, as in any proper presentation, we've you know assembled the parts in a nice way so that you can see actually how it works. And when we were putting it together, I was using this extensively to make sure I'd done everything right uh, because if the geometry is wrong, obviously those mechanisms won't work. Here is a tool to explode things. We actually made this uh, work as part of the demonstration because um, we already had this tool working for pulling on edges and um, for working with patterns, and we decided to also make it work on components. Here you can see the cross section. This was really what we wanted to do to, uh, this is what we were trying to go for in making the transmission. And we think that in most software today, you really don't get much of a chance to work in the cross section. And I'd say that three quarters of the time I spent modeling this transmission, I was looking at this view right here, modeling the parts, drawing the, draw, drawing the parts, and uh, moving them around in, uh, to get everything to fit right there in the cross section. So in this part of the demo, we bring in a bearing from Pro-E. This is actually how I made the original bearing to represent the, uh, the one that we saw in the model. I was working one weekend with uh, our developer by the name of Max, and uh, he uh, was modeling the differential end of the transaxle. And he said, hey, you know, I just downloaded this bearing from uh, this, the, the, the website based on the part number. Of course, with this bearing that I was trying to make, there was no part number. But I went to SKF and got the Pro-E assembly. And here you can see is the assembly. It came in as a real assembly. All the bearing rollers are their own components. So I was able just to take this one half of it that measured out to be almost exactly the right size, throw it in like this. And this is exactly what I did to make the bearing. I uh, took it, I flipped it around so it was a reflection of itself, and then I merged the parts together. Now, I didn't actually take this part of the... Tr of the uh, output shaft apart, so I don't really know what the inside of the retaining ring looks like, but figure it probably looks something like this. And um, as for this ring on the outside, um, it is merged together into one piece. It's kind of cool because this actually is a very precise mount. On the, the VW transmission, It uh, there are all these little shims to make sure that it, this actually sits the, uh, the pinion gear that hooks up the differential uh, in a very precise position. So this geometry is very important. In the demo here, we'd already made it. I made it in the context of the other bearing, but you can see we can just merge them together. And this is you know, almost exactly how I, had to, uh, how I was able to get this part made. Saved me a lot of time over making it from scratch, and I think it's more accurate because it's the real geometry of a bearing that fits about that spec.